Hello everyone and welcome back to my little home machine shop. Uh, in today's video we're going to be covering the making of the flywheel for this little four stroke engine that I've been working on. Now last week when I posted I left you up to this position here <coughs> where I'd um, done all the camshaft and all the uh, all the keyways and the crank in both sides of the crank, the camshaft drilling and tapping the holes in here and uh, you know it's slowly slowly coming on now I'm attempting to make four of these if you remember so one for myself one for my buddy Andrew at the TAFE and two for the other boys at the TAFE now this was quite this was quite a bit of work so I started off with a seven kilo slug of cast uh, I think it's just grey cast I'm not too sure of its exact uh, metallurgical properties and my face obviously facing it uh, parallel turning and then scalloping out this section and here this step out here um, it was a bit of work let me tell you and uh, also you know boring this to the to an accurate size and uh, then I had to put it on the rotary table and uh, machine out all these little pockets in here now it's not a hundred percent exact it is out slightly um, I might check its balance later and balance the wheel I do have a balancer what I use to balance my helicopter parts on and blades and stuff like that so I could put that in the balancer and just see uh, alternative it is out of balance I could always broach the keyway in a select spot so that way then it counteracts as the pistons going up okay you know how do you you got to counteract that piston whether it's at top dead center or bottom dead center so that's that's food for thought or I'll just drill some holes in it to uh, to free it up all right so let's get stuck into the video and this will be the cast that I'm using to make the flywheel from now this cast is 130 millimeters in diameter and roughly 45 millimeters thick now being cast obviously it's being extruded out so it's not concentric so rule of thumb is when you're running cast you should really always run it in a four jaw chuck so to do that today I, I, I didn't clock it in all I used was the concentric rings on the chuck face and I've got it pretty close you know, considering it is cast it has been rough sawn on a bandsaw so the face will be a little bit out and will be a little bit jittery but that's not too bad so I'm going to come in now and face that and then start OD turning that down now I'm currently taking off about 20 thou off the face of the material so 20 thou is roughly half a mil I'm feeding at 0.2 millimeters per revolution at the moment and I'll have to take another pass after this cut. Now I'm going to take one more cut on the face and uh, that's roughly, I've taken off about 50 pounds now. Now I'm probably running it a little bit fast. The lathe, the old culture is on about 320 RPM. And if you do the mass for high, using high speed steel, I know I'm using carbide. Uh, cast usually cuts at 15 meters per minute with high speed steel. So if I did 320 times 15 divided by 170, of course I can't use constant surface feed here because it's a manual lathe and that's a bit too But the RPM should roughly be around about 120 if you multiply that figure by 4 your carbon. Uh, I'm running a little bit quick and that's the reason I'm getting a bit of a shine in the cast. So I've uh, stopped machining at the moment I just wanted to show you what I'm doing next so off camera there I just popped in the center drill and just put a little dot there in the center. I'm going to use my spring dividers now So now I have my rough guide I can machine down to and once I get the boss big enough I can measure it with a vernier.
I've repositioned the camera and I'm going to do some parallel turning now. Now I need to get this outside diameter down to 160 millimetres. Now it's a little bit hard to show you this on camera, so the tripod's really in my road. Um, I'm currently eating away inside this cavity here, and I'm taking about 50 fowl depth of cuts each time, and I'm feeding both ways. So I'll cut 50 fowl going in and 50 fowl on the way back. So I've roughed down this section here with that carbide tool I had in the other holder, tool one. I've switched over to my boring bar, which has got a pal bit insert in it. And these pal bit inserts cut a bit like um, high speed steel. They give you a really nice finish. So I'm gonna pop in there now. I'm gonna take one more millimeter off the wall. I'm not gonna worry about the curved surface in there. I'm just relying on the tool radius instead. I've locked the carriage on the lathe, uh, so that won't move. Um, I'm running the lathe in reverse, so I'm machining on this back side. I'm going to machine this outside diameter now, and then once I get to depth, I'll auto feed back out of that to blemish, uh, to blemish it in with the other side. Off camera, I uh, gave the flywheel a bit of a tickle up and uh, just hit it with my lay file. Um, put a radius on here, put a small radius on here. Uh, just gave it a little bit of a leading shawl over and a bit of a wipe down with WD 40. Uh, I'm going to drill it now, center drill the drill, and then I'll read that 15 mil hole. I've decided against reaming this hole. Uh, my crankshaft is measuring 14.95, 14.96. So if I ream that, that will be a little bit sloppy because usually reams come about a H7 tolerance. So I've decided to drop in with a little boring bar. And as you can see, I've got my dial gauge set up here. And that way then I can take an accurate measurement in metric because this is an imperial lathe and walk the size in.
I've uh, finished boring. Let's uh, see if it fits. Now I've uh, finished the uh, inside of the flywheel, <clears throat> so I've taken it off the chuck and put it on backwards. I've used some uh, aluminium coke can here, just to um, act as soft jaw so I don't uh, mar that outer surface there. Now it's running fairly good. There's a slight jitter, a deviation in the needle, but it's definitely, you know, it's, it's under 10 micron, it's probably around uh, four or five micron run out and I'm not too worried about that So what I'll do now I'll face all this out a bit off get this down to 30 mil then do the channeling internally Righto, so I'll put my boring bar in and I'm currently boring this diameter out to 130 millimetres. I'm still on the back side of the flywheel. Now I've currently got the boring bar on the back side and running the lathe in reverse. Uh, this little boss here has got to be 30 millimetres. Uh, once again, I'm using the compound feed to come in. That way then I can control an accurate measurement here without running the risk of blowing it out. So in reverse we go. So I've just finished up the operations in the lathe. I've done the front side and the back side. Um, well actually when this is fitted to the little four stroke engine this, this becomes the outside and that is the inside. Um, it's a lot of work, it was a lot of material and uh, we've still got a bit more to go now. We've got to do the slots in the centre or the spokes.
I've indexed the flywheel around 180 degrees. Uh, I just filmed this one being performed. I'm doing this pocket now. I'm doing it in two passes. So dropping down 6 mil, cleaning that pocket up, drop down to 12, full clean up, and then I'll do the contour around the wall. Righto folks, uh, thanks for tuning in today and uh, I'll try and get an, another video out next week. H however, don't hold your breath. Um, I've got to do some more flywheels before I move on to other parts. Uh, what I want to do too, when I all this material I move off this cast slug, um, I'm going to mix it up with some clear casting resin and probably pack it into this base here to get a bit of weight in that base because as you can see, the little motor is quite heavy with that flywheel and it just wants to tip over, all right? Thanks guys, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll see you in the next Aaron Engineering video. Bye for now. Hello princess. Righto, I'm in the workshop here and I've got the inspector number two has come in to inspect. Now she's been a little bit upset because she wants to hold Pop's good camera. Would you like to film? Here we go. Okay, two hands. So, want to point it at Pop? So at the moment, Pop stopped work because he needs to change the cutting tip. Because silly Pop ran the lathe the wrong way and broke the top off the tip 